Okay, so good news is we learned a bunch on the first go. Um, the bad news is we're going to do a full rebuild. So I think it's going to be a lot stronger this time based on what we learned last time. And so as far as like the nozzles, so I bought two different size bushings this time and we're hoping that the longer the longer threads will engage those nozzles and we won't have to add an extra gasket inside the nozzle. Um, we have, we're still going to use our gaskets, but now we also have plumber's putty. We have this kind of pipe dope. We got lots of thread tape and then all of our connections are going to be slip fit connections that glue together. So we're going to basically replace this threaded ball valve with a slip ball valve so we can glue it so it doesn't leak. And then we have um, more of an industrial strength PVC glue. Uh, so this is kind of that homemade piece that failed. So we went out and got like a real, this is um, a three inch to inch and a half, like full, full rated schedule 40 PVC fitting. And hopefully that glued on there. I think the most pressure in the whole system is where that 140 PSI gets reduced to an inch and a half. So hopefully this with the industrial strength PVC cement will hold together and uh, we'll check back in once this is all put together. So I think we finally figured out the nozzle assembly. We have not figured out the nozzle. Okay, I think now we might have figured out the nozzle assembly. And so we're basically going to put the spacer on, uh, screw the nozzle on and it's going to go on far enough to engage that gasket at the end of the nozzle. We have a homemade gasket on this side of the bushing. So that's going to go on the inside and then on the outside with the threads that are left. We're going to put another homemade gasket on the outside with the fitting that came with the micro hydro around here. Maybe. And so with this assembly, you, this is the correct distance away from the little spoons on the Pelton wheel. The gasket is engaged on the nozzle, so there should be no leaking inside once we thread tape and pipe dope it. There's a gasket between the bushing and the housing on this side, so no water can get from the inside in behind here. And if any does, there's another gasket on the outside to prevent water from spilling out. And then we're just going to tighten this as tight as we can, and that'll like psh, tighten everything together. And then this is where the T will enter to begin the, the whole outside again. I think we did it. <laughs> All right, so we got it all re-plumbed. We got the nozzle fittings in. Um, I think the best thing I did was buy an extra one of these, thankfully. So we didn't have to wait to order another one of these three inch unions, but we got that. So this is our coupling to our three inch to one and a half inch reducer into our T all the way around with the, so this is a slip ball valve. So that'll be glued in place and then all the way around to the other nozzle and there's no threads there were threads on the last one and this one's just going to glue straight onto that piece so it will be a full rebuild if we have to do it again but if we don't have to do it again it'll be it should work really well and be super strong so we'll get all that glued up we'll bring it back to the powerhouse and tee it up for another round Okay, well, I skipped a whole bunch of steps because <clears throat> we were busy building, but we got it all together, all glued together. We built this little housing for it, and we're just going to turn it on. <laughs> I think I'll give my dad the spot next to the ladder this time. <laughs> <laughs> Should I get one foot on the ladder? Okay. Here we go. So that's the water. 
It's kind of nice with this crib. You can't see anything. I'm just watching the bottom, I guess, watching for any leaks, but so far so good. It hasn't started spinning yet. We'll turn her up a, a crank. Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> I'm equally excited and scared. <laughs> so the gate valve is probably about 6% open. Should we go another crank? windy down here. Wow. Some leaks there. That one in the back corner. Pretty good. Pretty good leak there. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> After a brief fight for the ladder, we got the gate valve open. <laughs> it's leaking a bunch from there, but that's okay. And uh, it is giving her. How oh, cool. I don't really want to open. Can we open the second nozzle? What a beauty! So we had the micro hydro running for, oh, I don't know, probably eight minutes. And then it slowly started to shut itself down, just started to spool down slower and slower, and then eventually just stopped spinning. And even when we open the gate valve, there's water flowing through into the housing. There's water flowing out the drain pipe, but the turbine won't spin. So hopefully, kind of crossing our fingers that there's a plug in the nozzles. So we're going to take it apart again, go in from the bottom, and hopefully clean out the nozzles, and then it'll work again. If not, then we don't know what the problem's going to be. But the wires didn't get wet, so it wasn't that. And uh, but anyway, we're going to see if we can slide this out and do some work. Okay, so we got all those bolts out. We're just going to pop this off now. Take, see how that gasket that we made works? Hey, nice. I'm gonna take off one of these nozzles. We'll do this nozzle first. Something sticking out of it. it. Looks like there's already something sticking out of that nozzle. So that's great news. Not that there's something that that we already got the nozzle <coughs> stuck, but more the fact that the turbine is not broken. <laughs> All right, look at that. So that nozzle is right. It's like silicone. It's full of stuff. That's fantastic. Oh, that's a little plastic chunk. I guess it just went through the other way with 140 psi so it's probably not gonna I'm probably not gonna blow it up okay so we'll clean these nozzles out and put it back together and we'll get her going again booyah both nozzles completely plugged that's so there's the culprit that's what was sitting in the nozzle there and blocking it up it's just a piece of schedule 40 that must have been in the pipe when we assembled it so hopefully that's all cleared out now and get it spinning again. 
All right, nozzles are clean, microhydro is reinstalled, and we're going to open her up one more time. Away she goes! <laughs> that sound never gets old. <laughs> We just have one nozzle open right now. But she's back in business! Let's see if we can keep her going for more than eight minutes. That's the standing record. <laughs> oh, that is pretty. Like micro hydro system was fun to build. Now we're getting into the scary part. <laughs> we're gonna see how many volts this thing produces when it's unloaded. So we have the rectifier hooked up with our three AC wires and we're gonna measure the volts in DC coming out this side of the rectifier with our multimeter. So cross your fingers that this goes well. We'll start slow. <laughs> Positive, negative. Ooh. So you can hear it still spooling up. About 63. The multimeter is rated for 600 volts, so if we start getting close, then we'll shut her down. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we got another clog in the nozzle. We're going back in! But this went well. What did we get up to? Just over 200? Yeah. Sweet. Well, we're getting more and more efficient at taking the bottom of the micro hydro system off. The, uh, I think there's another oh, clog in the nozzle when we started to do the voltage test. And yeah, there's more plastic in the nozzle, which we were at first excited to see, but now it's starting to become a pain in the butt. So hopefully we're starting to come to the end of the amount of plastic in the pipes. We're doing attempt number two of the volt, DC volts from the rectifier with clean nozzles. <laughs> And away we go. We got another chunk in the nozzle. We got to take it apart again. All right. Ah, uh, okay. We're troubleshooting. I lost track of how many times, but every time we turn the water onto the microhydro, the nozzles get clogged. It'll run for anywhere between 10 minutes and about 40 seconds. And there's chunks of plastic in the nozzle. And like, it's a big chunk of plastic, so we're trying to figure out where the heck they're coming from. Because the only PVC in the whole system is down here, is just right here. They're, both nozzles are getting chunks in them, so we know that it's not just a problem in this part of what we built. So the problem has to be between here and here because this goes to my main water supply that's been running for you know a couple of months now. So something's going on here. So we're just I'm doing this union to reach in and see if anything if there's any chunks or I don't know if those were already in there and they're just getting cleared out or if the microhydro is actually creating those. But something weird's going on. So that's looking into the union. I don't see any plastic chunks. Looks all pretty smooth that way. Is 
Yeah, that looks great. And then this is in the other side of the union. Get some of that on. That also looks pretty good. So where the heck is that plastic coming from? I don't know. So what we've basically done is we've put the nozzles back on, but we've disconnected the drain so we can open it all the way up with two nozzles on, wait for it to get plugged, turn it off, take the nozzles off, clean them up, and we'll just do that over and over again until hopefully all this plastic has been flushed out. So let's do that. As soon as we open this one and increase the flow, we, I don't know, I think I heard the nozzle, nozzle clog. So, it, it stepped up at the start though, didn't it? Yeah, so we'll take that nozzle off and we'll see what's in it. I bet it's plastic. Alright, I just took the nozzle off. And there she is. A little piece of plastic in there. Hopefully there's not many left. All right, so we're on our second round of cleaning out the micro hydro line via just giving her with the bottom open, letting it flood the powerhouse. It's been going for a couple of minutes now, not clogging, which is great. The gate valve is fully open and both nozzles are running. So we'll keep this going for I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes, maybe that'll confirm there's no plastic left in the line and we can put it back together and move on to the next troubleshooting issue. <laughs> I'd say we're about a six and a half confident that we got all the plastic out out of 10, six and a half out of 10. Yeah, we got all the plastic out. So we're gonna turn it back on, let it go. We put it all back together and hopefully just see how she goes and as a bonus we might even be able to get our dc voltage out of the dc side of our rectifier if we're lucky <laughs> with no um no load on it so here goes nothing We are back in the powerhouse after about a week of personal recovery time. And last time we had it running for about two hours and we got 200 volts. Um, so I just went in to the turbine and cleaned it out one more time and found this in the second nozzle. So that, um, I don't know, it's probably the biggest piece we found yet. So I'm hoping that keeping it on for two hours flushed everything out. And that was the last piece we're gonna get. So now we're gonna go for it, turn it on one more time, and uh, hopefully get our final reading here of our bolts with two nozzles open at 140 PSI. 